Bismillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. Summary about the reverend guideline uh, on for management of major bleeding and coagulopathy following uh, trauma. Um, this this guideline published in 2023 uh, by two 23 uh, authors uh, shared in this uh, guideline six big sites in critical care, emergency medicine, trauma, blood banking in Europe. Um, 30, 39 recommendations divided on uh, nine phases. They used about 391 references and I prepared in 200 slides and I should summarize it in only uh, 30 minutes. The recommendation, uh, the level of recommendation was a strong recommendation, they will say recommend or weak recommendation, they will say suggest. And the level of evidence is, is uh, between high quality, moderate quality, and low quality evidence, as discussed before in previous lectures. Trauma-induced coagulopathy, uh, the mechanism of this coagulopathy started from the trauma per se. This can lead to trauma, bleeding, the bleeding leading to uh, tissue hypoxemia, acidosis, and the acidosis leading to more coagulopathy. At the same time, our resuscitation per se can lead to more coagulopathy, like excessive colloid and the crystalloid infusion. This leading to hypothermia and dilutional coagulopathy factor deficiency and thrombocytopenia. This lead to more more coagulopathy. Also, using a non-protocolized or massive blood transfusion, this leading to hypothermia and hypothermia leading to more coagulopathy and the like fluids leading to co uh, decreasing or dilutional effects on coagulation factors and, and uh, uh, thrombocytopenia. As we know, there is some factors or collateral factors leading to more uh, uh, coagulopathy, like what's called triad of death or lethal triad, which is the hypothermia, coagulopathy, and acidosis. The 39 recommendation divided into nine phases, starting from pre-hospital, then when the patient landed to uh, uh, ER, diagnosis, uh, resuscitation, rapid control of bleeding, initial management of coagulopathy, and then after initial management of coagulopathy, the goal-directed coagulation management, then how to, to deal with the patient on uh, trauma coagulopathic and his was uh, antithrombotic agents and after that DVT or VTE prophylaxis and then uh, uh, implementation of these guidelines and the KBIs. If we started from pre-hospital phase, the uh, highly recommend to uh, as soon as, bo as possible shift the patient from the scene to the proper level of uh, trauma. So severely injured patient should be trans transported uh, uh, in no time to uh, level one trauma. Level one trauma center de uh, defined as trauma center containing uh, all specialties 24-7. Uh, and also they have research and the residency program. The increasing the time in the scene or increasing the time of uh, the uh, response to the trauma, it will increase the mortality between 1% to 2% for each minute. Then also there is uh, some uh, recommendation with moderate evidence that the, the outside hospital should control the bleeding uh, 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 as soon as possible, either by manual compression, if this is obvious bleeding, or like specific injury in the neck, and the penetrating in injury of the neck, the applied like full catheter, or an extremity injury, and this bleeding by applying the tourniquet. And tourniquet now as a standard of, ca of care in most of RCTs published in the room. Then, supported patient outside the, the hospital uh, by enterocal tube, uh, they recommend that uh, the put a recommendation of supraglottic devices not inferior to enterocal tube. However, in, in uh, many literature or many studies, they found insertion of enterocal tube, especially in traumatic brain injury outside the hospital, associated with um, some mortality. So the, 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 the other recommendation is not to intubate or to, not to put a target for uh, the, the intubation. The target should be avoid hypoxemia. It is highly recommended, especially in traumatic brain injury. Avoid hyperoxia. Especially in traumatic brain injuries, this will increase the oxygen free radicals and oxygen free radicals leading to more uh, 
compromisation of cerebral perfusion, avoid the hypo, hyperventilation, except if there is indication like embedding herniation. If the patient intubated, all patients recommended nowadays to use low tidal volume uh, uh, ventilation, about 6 ml per, per, per predicted body weight. No clear uh, recommendation to give back the RBCs outside the hospital. However, proper trial, I will discuss it later, uh, uh, showing some improvement to give 111 protocol, but it is uh, not outside, it is inside hospital. Uh, once the patient landed to the ER, in combat trial, no difference to give or not to give uh, as regard 28 mortalities. However, in bumper trials, uh, trials, they used uh, plasma uh, outside the hospitals, they found some mortality benefits. Because of conflicting uh, uh, results of these trials, they put no recommendation about to give or not to give uh, back the RBCs outside the hospital. Once the patient now he is in ER, we should do a, a diagnosis, uh, some general uh, resuscitation, uh, rapid control of bleeding, initial uh, management of bleeding, and goal directed. To start by diagnosis, uh, the bota recommendation with uh, low evidence, the patient once landed to the ER should do for him what's called combination of comprehensive assessment using physiological, anatomical, laboratory, um, fast, uh, ask for the mechanism of injury, and check the response for to initial resuscitation. This famous table, which explains the levels of uh, bleeding or estimated blood loss in the trauma patient, more than three, according to the ATLS uh, table, uh, associated with more need for massive transfusion or direct triaging of this patient from ER to uh, OR or, uh, or um, uh, 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 interventional radiology source. Also, the, 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 uh, in the summary of evidence, they found blood pressure less than 30 or shock index more than 0.8 uh, associated with increased the need of massive transfusion, the need of intervention radiology, uh, uh, and maybe direct shifting patient to the OR. Also, during your assessment, you, sh you should search uh, of uh, severe anatomical uh, uh, disruption like uh, amputation, hemothorax, uh, complex pelvic fractures. This category of patients may need immediate triaging them to OR or intervention radiology, or if the LOX is stable, they need more emphasization like doing a co contrast enhanced uh, CT. Also check for laboratory baseline coagulation, send the lactate, base deficit if the lactate is not available, and using uh, uh, fast or focus assisted sonography and trauma patient, especially if the patient is unstable and, and the fast is positive, is maybe associated with shifting this patient immediately to uh, 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 intervention or OR uh, suit. Then, during your assessment, you should take a, a, a detailed history about the mechanism of injury. It is disillusion injury, gunshot, penetrating, patient trapped for a long time in the scene, and critical, critically falling from height. And putting all together to, 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 to put a plan either to activate massive transfusion or to uh, shift the patient to OR or to, uh, to go for intervention radiology or even to if the patient uh, negative as fast and his looks is stable to keep him in monitoring area for more observation. Then according if the patient is having obvious source of bleeding and, and the landed to the ER was obvious source of bleeding is about a recommendation that this patient was obvious source of bleeding should immediately control it. especially if penetrating the trunkal mechanism trunkal mechanism significant anatomy disruption like uh, amputation of more or one limb major physiological derangement like hospital pre-hospital CBR profound shock the patient landed with as we mentioned before with shock index less than uh, more than 0.8. And the following immediate or uh, uh, rapid uh, control of source of bleeding, especially in pelvic fractures, uh, in, uh, more, uh, more important uh, as improving the survival. If the patient came in or landed to the ER and he we, with unidentified source of bleeding, but he looks stable, they recommend to search where is the source of bleeding. Source of bleeding can be detected by 
whole body CT. All body CT, as as mentioned by Haber Wanger, uh, uh, 2014, is feasible and beneficial. And the uh, founding uh, some survival benefits if the CT founding 50 meters between the foraging area and the city. And if you are designing for new hospital, you should put on, on your mind to keep CT, the city scan not more than 50 minutes from the aging area. Also, uh, the same author to 2013, founding even if the patient is hemodynamically unstable, it is more beneficial to do for him whole body CT. It will detect the source of bleeding and provide the patient and to put a plan uh, for OR or intervention reduction. Other modalities of, of image using pre-hospital ultrasonography. The, the only suggestion and the moderate evidence to using pre-hospital uh, uh, ultrasonography, wasting of time, uh, the, the result is not uh, convincing. So it is only suggestion with moderate evidence. However, focusing is highly recommended uh, or recommended with uh, low quality of evidence. The sensitivity of focus is low as we, as if compared by CT, sensitivity 0.7 and specificity it is 0.9. Negative focusing with patient was hemodynamically unstable mandate to go for uh, other modality of investigation like uh, contrast enhanced whole body CT. Rolling a patient on his right side increase the fluid and hepato renal pouch and so increase the sensitivity of fast. FAST now can be augmented by using additional transverse scan on biopic synthesis pubes, and this is called the FAST plus. This is highly correlated with the CT pubes. Immediate contrast enhanced uh, whole body CT, time saving, uh, diagnose, uh, have diagnostic accuracy. Uh, uh, very important to localize the bleeding, very important to help us to put a plan which uh, limb or which source of bleeding should be treated first and then have indirect impact on survival. There is some uh, tool which used in REACT2 trial to, published in 2019 can help the ER physician to select the patient who will go for uh, CT. This tool, which in, involving clinical history and uh, clinical uh, uh, and physiological, physiological like, uh, uh, systolic blood pressure less than 100, estimated blood loss more than uh, 500, uh, CT or glass coma scale less than 13. However, in the clinical assessment, when he saw more fractures, uh, uh, like two long bone fractures, flail chest, penetrating pelvic abdominal, unstable vertebral fractures, or and or the presence history of trapping or uh, fall from height, critical fall from height, uh, 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 combination of this leading to rapid triaging or rapid shifting this patient to whole body CT. Uh, also, during we did in the ER assessment, uh, comprehensive assessment, imaging, we selected as the proper imaging, then we'll send the lab. They recommend to send hemoglobin, not, not the baseline hemoglobin only, but it is the serial. So increase in safety of checking hemoglobin, you should send it as a serial, as a recommendation with moderate evidence. However, admission of the patient, they found in some studies, admit, admitting a patient with hemorrhagic shock with level of hemoglobin less than eight associated with high mortality. Also, one of the recommendations, once the patient landed in the ER, to send a recommendation to send lactate. If lactate is not available, send the base deficit. And it is a recommendation with moderate evidence. Lactate is very important to, to uh, detect the uh, 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 severity of hemorrhagic shock, especially in penetrating trauma. However, in the penetrating trauma, especially the heart rate and the respiratory rate is not reliable, especially in penetrating trauma to the chest. So lactate is very important to detect the uh, perfusion impact. Uh, however, most of the patients coming in trauma may be uh, alcohol consumers, so the, the lactate level in this patient may be not, not reliable. If the, if the lactate is not available, they, they recommend to send initial uh, uh, base depth Deficit. And finally, the, uh, there is no strict correlation between lactate and, and base deficit, but if the lactate is available, is best. 
The second, to, to send coagulation assay. This coagulation assay either to send, uh, according to them, conventional uh, co coagulation testing or point of care testing, it is visco elastic method or VIM. So the CCT or conventional uh, coagulation testing, maybe prothrombin, send the fibrinogen level, uh, platelet count, and a uh, uh, point of care platelet, uh, uh, platelet factor or platelet uh, activi activity C. Then uh, either Rotom or TIG uh, recommended by or, or tested or studied in iTactic trial published in 2020, uh, they found as a primary outcome no significance between using CCT or VEM in uh, activation of massive transfusion. But in selected subgroup uh, analysis, they found the patient with severely uh, traumatic injury, there is a benefit as regards 28 uh, reduction of mortality. Using point of care uh, platelet function uh, devices, according to this guideline recommended, by moderate uh, level of evidence. Then, after imaging, diagnosis, uh, uh, or sending lab, tissue oxygenation, volume, uh, and the fluids, and the bridge. What's the guideline saying about this? They saying to, to keep systolic blood pressure from 80 to 90, or mean arterial blood pressure from 50 to 60, and this is a recommendation with moderate evidence, except if the patient had traumatic brain injury defined as Glasgow scale less than eight. This is studied by Alexander Etel 2018. He found premissive hypotension may be offer survival benefits and reduce the blood and the blood product utilization. Also, Van Gaetel 2014 found excessive or non-restricted fluid resuscitation associated with higher mortality, multiple organ failure, nosocomial infection, need of more transfusion, prolonging the care, length of stay in, in, in ICU and hospital, and indirectly impact the mortality. Permissive hypotension is contraindicated in severe traumatic brain injury and cautiously uh, used in elder with chronic hy arterial hypertension. The target in this Two categories, the traumatic brain injury and the patient elder with chronic arterial blood pressure to keep adequate perfusion, not to uh, control the bleeding. This is take more priority more than controlling the bleeding. Damage control surgery also, uh, not damage control surgery, damage control resuscitation uses the same term of keeping systolic blood pressure from 80 to 90 and the MEP from 50 to 60. The second issue, if you don't achieve the target blood pressure by volume uh, restri restricted volume resuscitation, you should start some vasopressors. These vasopressors, according to the guidelines, are adrenaline uh, and sometimes dobutamine with moderate evidence of uh, uh, moderate level of evidence. According to systematic reviews, they found the 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 pathophysiology of the shock is divided in two phases. First, the phase or initial phase in which there is vaso vasoconstriction and thumbaso excitatory uh, 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 mechanism. However, later in the shock, the patient become more vasodilated and there is thumbaso inhibitory phase. Based on this uh, observation, they recommend in the early stages of resuscitation to keep the patient's systolic blood pressure from 80 to 90 by restricted volume resuscitation and maybe avoid using of vasopressors. But however, it is not feasible or not achievable to achieve 80, they recommend to start noradrenaline as a first line of vasopressors. Also, there is some observation in the literature they found the hemorrhagic shock associated with the state of argon vasopressin deficiency. And based on Sims et al. Uh, study, he studied about 100 trauma patients. He found if giving uh, uh, vasopressin by uh, initial dose four international units and then 0.04 international per, uh, unit per minute associated with decreasing the blood product requirement. Uh, and the butamine. Finally, the butamine can be uh, re uh, recommended by the, by the guideline to given in the patient is still hypotensive, however, restricted volume recitation, however, not adrenaline, you can add some adobitamine, especially if the history of trauma or the assessment of trauma showing cardiac contusion or indirect cardiac injury, like in brain injury with intracranial hypertension. So adding, it is now adding 
dobiotamin 2 uh, epinephrine. Then after vasopressors, we come to the question, what is the best fluid? According to the, the guidelines, they are recommending to give normal saline or balanced uh, crystalloid solution to be initiated as the uh, fluid of choice. It is with moderate level of evidence. They also recommend not to give hypotonic solution in traumatic brain injury and the label ring like it as hypotonic. Further, if the, if the target blood pressure not achieved by a balancing crystalloid by noradrenaline as a vasopressor, they recommend the restricted colloid resuscitation. The type of uh, 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 crystalloid mentioned in the most of these studies, including normal saline, and the normal saline amount, amount of size, the similarity of normal saline is 308. However, Ranger lactate is 270. So for this reason, they labeled Ranger lactate as hypotonic contraindicated in traumatic brain injury. The plasma light considered as, as um, a, a balanced crystalloid uh, solution. A lot of studies studied the, 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 the impacts of uh, ring lactate versus uh, or balanced crystalloid versus saline. Uh, one of, of the biggest one is the SMART trial. They found using uh, 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 co uh, balanced crystalloid versus uh, sodium chloride associated with decreased death, decreased the incidence of uh, new renal replacement therapy and some, as mentioned, some survival benefits. A uh, basic trial found our but but some recommendation. If you are if you used sodium chloride, you should limit the using of sodium chloride not to increase the uh, using it by more than one point five liter. Uh, excessive saline uh, resuscitation usually associated with uh, metabolic acidosis with hyperchloremia and maybe need of CRRT or acute kidney injury. In PROMET trial, they found no mortality benefits uh, uh, difference between the Ringer lactate and the uh, normal saline in all trauma patients except in some category. It's very important. Subcategory is the traumatic brain injury. They found increasing in mortality, increasing is the, the Ringer lactate was associated with higher adjusted mortality if compared to normal saline in patients with traumatic brain injury. On the other hand, using hypertonic saline as a routine or a continuous infusion in COVID trial, and they found uh, it is nine intensive care uh, uh, units in, in France, about 370 patients, they found no result. Based on that, no result, no, no result in a significantly better neurological outcome within six months if you use 20% hypertonic saline compared to standard care. Using colloid is also recommended with no evidence, but when, when, when the uh, recommended when uh, uh, you 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 cannot achieve target blood pressure lower systolic blood pressure from 80 to 90 if there's no traumatic brain injury or more than uh, 100 if if there is traumatic brain injury with crystalloid and with noradrenaline you can at that time start uh, colloid one of the uh, uh, issues about the restriction to using the blood products blood products and the packed rbcs uh, based on these guidelines, to put a recommendation, they put a recommendation to keep hemoglobin or to recommend target hemoglobin from seven to nine. Seven to nine, uh, uh, beneficially is uh, and uh, low harm to use seven as a target for a trauma patient. And they found more in the recent meta analysis, uh, uh, including four studies, three randomized controlled trials, and the retrospective study that in the patient with traumatic brain injury, hemoglobin. Hemoglobin threshold seven was associated with better neurological outcome than hemoglobin hundred. But at the end of the uh, evidence, they found you know, the future should be going for a, a multimodal neurological uh, 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 parameter to detect the patient uh, traumatic brain injury patient need uh, blood transfusion or no. In uh, Oconco et al, he found the study uh, the, in the partial pressure uh, of oxygen brain uh, partial pressure of oxygen. They found less than twenty increase the risk or increase the need for rapid uh, our uh, RBCs uh, transfusion. 
Also, using intraoperative cell salvaging is considered beneficial, and uh, this is suggest suggest with moderate evidence to use it when when feasible. Uh, intraoperative cell salvaging, in summary, is taking the patient's own blood and then clearing him by filtering and uh, cleaning, and then returning this blood to back to the patient. It is not visible outside of the hospital, not visible in the ER, so only in the OR and in a special situation like uh, uh, penetrating chest or pelvic, uh, severe pelvic trauma or abdominal, clean abdominal injury. Also, the better recommendation about hypothermia to keep, uh, to, to, uh, to apply uh, all measures ne needed to reduce the heat loss and to uh, warm the hypothermic patient is a recommendation with moderate, with, with uh, low evidence. But uh, they mentioned the drop of uh, uh, blood, uh, uh, drop of temperature more than one uh, centigrade is associated with decrease the activity of coagulation factors about uh, 10% and so increasing the mortality. Uh, so, uh, and also they found Inducing hypothermia and torbatic brain injury, prophylaxis, prophylactic, it's not associated with increasing the outcome. However, therapeutically is beneficial. Rapid control of bleeding in the ER, including uh, uh, damage control search. And based on this guideline, they recommend the patient should be go for damage control surgery, especially if hemorrhagic shock, ongoing bleeding, coagulopathy, combined abdominal vascular and pancreatic injury. And the other indication for damage control surgery patient is hypothermic, acidosis, inaccessible measure, anatomical injury. And if there is no all of this, the patient should be go immediately for uh, uh, should go immediately. Should go immediately for uh, uh, a definitive source of bleeding. Damage control surgery, to summarize it, it is in the three, should be going, going for three phases. First phase, immediate laboratory, uh, immediate laboratory uh, control of bleeding, do uh, decontamination uh, and uh, backing, uh, control bleeding or control uh, management of bleeding, and then shift the patient back to the ICU. In ICU, we should focus on triad of this, the coagulopathy correction, acidosis correction, and uh, temperature correction, then plan for definitive repair or go again for the OR. In 2020, the founding, uh, there is ben survival benefit from using the damage control surgery was performed in compare of definitive repair in selected groups. Also, one of the specific category should be the bleeding control and them as soon as possible, the pelvic ring closure and stabilization. They recommend using the pelvic binder outside the hospital and then to put a plan for, for a pelvic ring fracture in the, two, in the ER. According to this algorithm, they suspected the patient was unstable, which is unstable, was both fast and admitted to the ER, if the CT is, uh, if, there is if there is instability and the post of fast shifting immediately to OR for possible backing. Like in, if his patient is stable, yani, and the negative or negative fast, we should do uh, more investigation like doing the CT. If the CT came, yes, positive, the patient should be going for angio, uh, angiography uh, for possible uh, pelvic arterial embolization. And if the patient is stable and is fast negative, uh, looks stable, CT negative, for go for uh, a more observation. Using hemostatic agents also recommended by moderate evidence. The hemostatic agents or goes embergenated in the uh, hemostatic agents like collagen, gelatin, cellulose, or ketosan, which is extensively uh, used in UK military, uh, which is a silox, uh, showing uh, survival impacts, especially in bleeding, as obvious bleeding outside the hospital. Then initial management of bleeding and the coagulopathy, which including using of tranexamic acid with high recommendation within three hours from injury by one gram infused, infused over 10 minutes and then one gram over eight hours. 
Also, the bota recommendation that not to wait, not to wait for the results of coagulation or VIM to give tranexamic acid, give it as soon as possible, supported by CRASH-2 trial, CRASH-3 trial, uh, and the, as we mentioned, not to wait for the results of VIM or CCT. They recommend also uh, to give all measurements to support the coagulation initial immediately once hospital. This needs to send send coagulation factors once the patient landed to ICU and to detect what's called phenotype of bleeding. The trauma associated with coagulopathy is associated usually by DIC with fibrinolytic phenotype in which there is activation of coagulation factors, hyperfibrinolysis, and so the mo most commonly these patients with this type, type subtype of, pheno of DIC associated with decreasing fibrinogen uh, and the consumption coagulopathy. And all of this is augmented or uh, uh, increased uh, worsening by acidosis, hypothermia, and dilution effects of massive transfusion. Uh, based on this assessment, you should put what's called early and, and goal-directed therapeutic intervention. And the following using uh, goal-directed therapeutic intervention, if compared by uh, 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 bizarre, or unprotocolized transfusion associated with reduced need of transfusion, decreased post-traumatic multiple organ failure, decreased the length of stay, and improved survival. Initial management of patient with expected massive hemorrhage, they recommend use protocolized. This is once the patient, patient land and you want to, to initial management of bleeding, uh, order for him fixed uh, protocol. Fixed protocol, which is using uh, uh, fibrinogen concentrate, uh, uh, highly recommended. Uh, fresh frozen plasma backed RBCs by, by ratio one to two. Uh, uh, addition of plated also suggested and not recommended. This is the summary of uh, blood transfusion protocols used in the ER. Once the patient landed and he has high risk of, of uh, massive transfusion we, uh, based on cl your clinical assessment, laboratory, physiologically, uh, and uh, images. Uh, if the lab results not came yet, so ask for primitive uh, transfusion, which is 111 protocol using plasma, uh, six units, a plated single donor, which is six units, and six units back the RBCs. However, if the results came, either it's conventional or visuoelective, you should go goal-directed. This uh, supported by proper trial, as we mentioned, they compared 111 versus 112. They found the using platelets early associated with decreasing the uh, mortality because of severe bleeding. Using a Fiber engine, very important and also recommended, especially uh, using two grams of fiber engine based on clinical criteria, especially in some categories of patient in which the systolic blood pressure less than 100, uh, 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 lactate more than five, or drop of hemoglobin. In FISTI trial, the founding using uh, the compared between uh, they compare between the uh, uh, using a fibrinogen concentrate plus carb uh, price they found uh, beneficially using of them in clot stabilization. Uh, however, in prospective trials, they, know for, know, they found no significant uh, reduction on 24 hours mortality. Because of this conflicting uh, uh, results, the evidence is very low. Then after assessment, initial registration, coagulation management, you will put some goals, what's called directed goals. About. Directed goals in, uh, uh, using CCT, as we mentioned, or VIM, CCT, which is a conventional uh, coagulation testing. VIM is viscoelective measurements or TIG and Rotem. And uh, based on the uh, mechanism we mentioned, you should put some goals. These goals, a lot of protocols initiated based on TIG, or based on rotum, or based on uh, conventional testing. Whatever you have, you should use it as a goals. Put some goals, like in plated, mustn't, if you have conventional testing also, keep platelet more than 50, INR less than 1.5, fibrinogen uh, uh, about two, uh, uh, temperature 
36 to 37 calcium level like this first should be protocolized and the goals directed management. Uh, Gonzalez et al. found uh, compared between using uh, conventional testing uh, versus TIG or Rotom, he found more uh, TIG and Rotom associated with more survival benefit and the less using of plated transfusion. Eretic is used, eretic trials using Rotom and Rotom founding to more survival benefit if, because Rotom directed us to using more fibrinogen and the fibrinogen increase the mortal, uh, increase survival. I tactic also, they found some benefits in the traumatic brain injury. So the bottom line, if uh, you have conventional testing or uh, VIM, better to use a, to use a VIM, however, not supported uh, not supported uh, uh, by high level of evidence, but if not available, use the conventional testing uh, with goal-directed therapy. Fresh frozen plasma also recommended to keep the eye in R less than 1.5, but not for uh, fibrinogen correction. This is on the proper try using 111, as you mentioned before. Coagulation factors concentrate. They recommend using it as with moderate evidence, uh, uh, but prothrombin, prothrombin uh, complex concentrate without clear indication like uh, reversal of warfarin, it is a suggestion only with moderate with uh, moderate uh, level of evidence. And as we mentioned before, the tranexamic acid uh, uh, supported by CRASH-2 and the CRASH-3 trials using fibrinogen concentrate and the cryoprecipitate to keep the fibrinogen level about 2 is supported by FIST-T trial. The platelets, as mentioned, they recommend to keep the platelet more than 50 if the patient is without trauma, traumatic brain injury, but if the traumatic brain injury, uh, uh, there, is, there is traumatic brain injury, should be kept uh, 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 about 100. This suggestion and with moderate level of evidence. Also, this suggests if you start uh, platelet, you should give, give from four, 4 or to 8 single platelet units. The calcium, they recommended to keep the calcium in normal range following the major trauma, especially this patient receiving massive transfusion. It is moderate recommendation with moderate evidence. And if there is hypocalcemia, should be corrected by calcium uh, chloride, not by calcium gluconate. Hypocalcemia usually associated with low bleated activation and the aggregation, decrease the clot strength, Decrease activation of some coagulation factor 2, 7, 9, 10, uh, protein C and S, increase uh, uh, blood transfusion requirements, and increase the mortality. Using factor 7, there is a re recommendation with moderate evidence not to give it. No, it is not recommend to give act activated factor 7 as a first line of treatment. Off label using of factor 7 should be used in a specific situation. Specific situation in which is like this mentioned in this uh, trial. If a, if you exhausted all approaches, the patient uh, surgically uh, controlled of his bleeding, uh, hemoglobin more than uh, hematocrit more than twenty five at four, plated more than fifty, fibrinogen level about two, INR less than uh, one point five. If all of this using tranexamic acid, correction of severe metabolic acidosis, hypocalcemia, and hypothermia. After all of this, and you have activated factor seven, you can give activated factor seven. Then after that, if the patient came to trauma and after resuscitation and taking history, you found him, he's an anti-thrombotic agent. Shall we reverse and what is the proper way for reversal? First of all, if we started by VKA uh, antagonist, we found our VK uh, antagonist, they recommend if the patient severely trauma with, uh, with Leading due to VK dependent anticoagulant to give four factors uh, uh, from bin concentration plus vitamin K5 to 10 milligram IV. There is a, a lot of preparation containing uh, uh, brothrom, uh, uh, three factors or uh, four factors. The difference between three factors and the four factors is the presence of factor seven, and the, but also divided into activated and the not. Uh, and unactivated. So the recommendation to give activated factor fac uh, four factors BCC. However, if the activated factor seven, uh, sorry, uh, four factors uh, BCC not available, you can use the uh, 
three factors BCC, which is deficiency in factor seven. The dose of uh, four BCC, depending on the level of INR, from two to three INR, you can give 25 units per kg with maximum 2,500. However, if the INR is four to six, giving 35 units per kg, more than 60, giving 50, with maximum uh, 5,000 units. Also, they found some observations that the using BCC, using BCC associated with thromboembolic events, especially with four factors of BCC. So as soon as possible, the hemorrhage control and the patient receives BCC, you should start for him DVT or VTE prophylaxis. If BCC is not, if not available, they suggest to giving uh, fresh frozen plasma. Fresh frozen plasma missing in coagulation factors, so low efficacy if compared to BCC, need large volume fresh frozen plasma to achieve correction of reversal of VKA, maybe associated with TACO or TRAN. In the DWAC, uh, in the factor factor 10 inhibitors, they recommend to suggest, sorry, all of this, all the, all the recommendation regarding XA inhibitors uh, or factor 10 and activated factor 10 inhibitors, it is only suggestion with moderate level of evidence to measure the level of uh, this agent to send activated factor 10 anti-activated factor 10 activity. If there is bleeding, they recommend to you to suggest, sorry, uh, andexonate alpha. If andexonate alpha, they, they, suggest, they suggest to uh, uh, start brothrobin uh, complex uh, concentrates. And like with uh, direct thrombin inhibitor the mechanism, this, uh, this suggests also to send dabigatrin uh, plasma level. To, uh, if dabigatrin plasma level not available to sta to send standard thrombin time. However, if there, there is life threatening, uh, uh, life threatening bleeding in dabigatrin, they uh, recommend recommend with moderate level of evidence to start the uh, uh, either cizumab or baxibine as a reversal. In patient traumatic with severe injury or severe bleeding, and he is on antiblated, they recommend to uh, to not recommend to avoid routine uh, bleated transfusion. As found in the meta-analysis, including 16 clinical trials in patients with traumatic intracerebral hemorrhage, and the the was on ABA, they found uh, uh, yes, there is significant difference in hematoma but no difference in mortality or disability uh, in 28 days. So, uh, and so also there is some side effects of removing a, a platelet as a routine, is that increasing thromboembolic events and maybe pulmonary embolism. Finally, patient now going for the very final stage is thromboprophylaxis. They, they uh, uh, bought a, some recommendation about VTE or DVT prophylaxis. In the first initial or initial phase, when the patient is still in high risk of bleeding, they, they, they recommend to put mechanical thromboprophylaxis, which is a rheumatic compression. Once the, the, the bleeding is controlled or the risk of bleeding is less, they recommend to using uh, combined pharmacological and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, mechanical. Pharmacological and mechanical, but they, they didn't recommend using graduated compression stocking, they didn't recommend using uh, uh, inferior vena cava filter as a prophylaxis. And when they compared low molecular weight heparin to unfractionic heparin, they found low molecular weight heparin is more beneficial in trauma. Uh, uh, beneficial means decrease both overall rates uh, and symptomatic rates of pulmonary embolism if compared to unfractionated heparin. Also, the low bleeding risk, especially in geriatric. Finally, they recommend to put uh, every hospital or every region, they, they should apply their local implementation of these guidelines. And also, uh, they should put in KBI to close monitoring of uh, implementation of these guidelines and the patient safety. Conclusion, as we mentioned before, we should know all uh, the mechanism of induced trauma induced coagulopathy to put our goals based on this one. And at the same time, we should uh, prevent the presence of the, the triad of death or lethal triad, which is hypothermia and the coagulation induced. But after this recommendation, 
I think we should create our uh, uh, survival trade, not a lethal trade, a survival trade. Survival trade or, or the impact on our practice should be include assessment, 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 and the both a goal uh, and the goal directed uh, protocolized uh, recitation based on this assessment. And the assessment should be continuous and if any change of the patient recommendation. And the second dilemma in survival trade, rapid control of bleeding. In two phases, pre-hospital by compression, tourniquet, whatever, uh, bind pelvic binder, and in hospital should be a, 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 a damage control station and damage control surgery, hemostatic uh, uh, agents. And then if you will give a blood transfusion or blood product transfusion or uh, uh, coagulation factor concentration should be protocolized. Protocolized means very empty and then goal directed. Very empty, one, 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 and uh, protocolized or goal directed based on a convention co uh, coagulation testing or based on uh, uh, event. Thank you.